Hi everybody, I'm back with yet again another Kuro no Kiseki news video and for today's video we got some really cool stuff to go over such as some three new sub characters as well as a web commercial. So before we get into some reading some stuff, let's check out the web commercial. Okay, so it's only 30 seconds long so this is going to go by very quick. So let's see. Oh, I need to slow this down. Very, very smooth. Neat. Alright, so I need, I need to slow this down a little bit. So much was happening so fast. So I guess the background song was just the same song that they were playing um, previously, but this has the vocals to it. Okay, so we're gonna have to slow this down here. Maximum slow. Okay, from off the bat, Vaughn is transforming into his other form. And it looks like we have our main antagonist over here, looks like. Oh, you got snake eyes. Alright, let me just double check here and see if I can just find any other detail. Yeah, we saw this chick before. I don't think we saw the other two yet. Okay, and we'll actually have Vaughn and Shizuna fighting each other here. And she's definitely enjoying it. And we've got the Bracer Gang. Vaughn's walking across the screen. Okay. Then we got Walter, the new girl, and a very uh, uh, gentleman we haven't seen yet, but many are seem to be speculating he could be the Thousand Oathbreaker. And looks like we have I think this is Judith transforming. Yeah, that's definitely Judith transforming. Okay. And then Agnes. And Vaughn. Just looking at each other in a field. Okay, so in the background here we have Fetty. And it looks like she has her clan marking on her weapon. The Kur the Kurga? Warriors clan? And then that's Mari. Wait a minute, hold on. What did he attack? I guess it's just an enemy or something. All right. And that is it. So we have just about two months until the game is released in Japan. So with this web CM coming out, I they probably will release the, the opening slash trailer. Probably not until next month. We still have about one, two, three, four, six more characters on their site that they have to reveal. So they will either probably do that over the course of the next month and then release the trailer and then maybe sometime soon after that they'll probably release you know a video or so showing like all their crafts and stuff but really cool i guess definitely will get you excited for the game all right so now let's get on with the details for these new sub characters that they have shown us and once again, I am going to be reading off the Gamatsu article that. And once again, I am going to be reading the Gamatsu article for the trend. 
Okay. And once again, I will be reading the Gematsu article with a translation for all these news. So if you'd like to read it yourself, I'll drop a link in the description. The first on the list, we have Walter Kron. He's voiced by Takehiro Yoshimizu. Many of you should already be familiar with him if you've played Trails in the Sky. Well, at least I hope you have. Um, he's age 37, height 195 centimeters, organization Ouroboros. Don't be cruel, I owe a lot to Dr. Arkwright for my previous request. Enforcer number 8 of Ouroboros, he is a combat enthusiast with an air of violence. A user of the Taito style, which is one of the three major eastern martial arts, he is Ryuga Roran's top disciple and was a senior pupil to Zin and Kirika. In his student days, his martial arts skills were already developed well beyond that of an ordinary person, which attracted him to the concept of power itself. And instead of a friendly fist, he set out to hone a murderous fist to take the lives of others, including his teacher, Ryuga. He's currently, he currently seems to be in pursuit of a young man in the Republic, where he encounters Vaughn and the Spriggans. And here we have a couple of screenshots of Walter. Nothing too spectacular going on here, aside from the fact that he's just talking to Vaughn in one of them. And I forgot to mention, yes, it is the same voice actor from back in Trails in the Sky. Alright, next up, we have a character that has piqued a lot of people's interest upon their reveal. It is Lucrecia Iseli, voiced by Kana Ueda. Now, if you weren't too familiar with who she is, you may recognize her in her roles such as Rin Tosaka from the Fate series or maybe IF from the Neptunia series. And she is age 29, she is 168 centimeters tall, organization Ouroboros, and she uses a dusk glaive. Mm -hmm. I wonder what kind of goodies kids these days would appreciate. Enforcer number four of Ouroboros, she is also known as Golden Butterfly, a woman with a unique air about her who always covers her face with a veil so her expressions are never visible, and is characterized by her gentle and elegant speech, which, which masks her true intentions. She once fought against a society as an assassin belonging to the organization Order of the Moonlight Horse. Though since losing the battle, she has joined the society. She wields a grotesquely large butter knife shaped weapon called the Dusk Glaive, which she uses to unleash fierce attacks that erase space itself. And here are some screenshots of her. Looks like she's standing alongside Walter and also that other dude we saw earlier. And we have another one here when she's using crafts against Vaughn's party. And she's standing alongside that guy once again. And just for a quick refresher for those of you who may have forgotten, um, is this picture of one of Sharon's memories for the Order in the Moonlight Horse. And alongside her here is the Golden Butterfly and supposedly the Thousand Oathbreaker. And next up we have Mare. She is voiced by Maria Naganawa. And if you aren't familiar with who she is, she is the voice of characters such as Platelet, from Cells at Work, Kanakamui from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, or Komeko from the Konosuba movie. Okay, age unknown. Leave it to me. Shard release, wear the nightmare. Take the Grendel. A custom made hollow core support artificial intelligence installed to the Zifa, Vaughn's combat orbment. Despite being an extremely assertive type, it has no fury will, and its personality is a mere facade of its artificial intelligence. Like other hollow cores, it usually provides support through guidance, through voice guidance, but around Vaughn it materializes in the real world as a hologram-like avatar after a certain occurrence. When that happened, it showed a free will, impossible for an artificial intelligence, and Vaughn's body was covered in a nightmare, transforming him into a Grendel, which wields incredibly explosive power. And here's some screenshots of Mare. Now, we don't really know too much of how this Grendel thing for Vaughn works. Is it like a buff like Rian Spirit Unification where he goes into an enhanced state? Or is it like a random curse thing that just happens? Or is it like just locked to specific story events where he does it? Or is it maybe like one of those, you know, crafts where like those Divine Knights just summon it, um, use it for a turn or whatever. But interesting to see how that'll play into the story and or gameplay 
And that's it for the three new sub characters. All that's left is some more details about two towns. So let's see here. So this is Crail Village. It's a rural village with a population of 1,000 people located in the countryside leading to Remiferia and Ored northwest of Calvert. Many people come here from the city for recreation due to its beautiful and expansive rural landscape and distant view of the mountains and hills in the northwest that lead to eastern Nord. Since it is close to the national border, Jaegers tend to stop by for food and rest, but since no group seems to be permitted to cause a disturbance in the village, as it serves as an in town for all sides, its residents are not too worried about their presence. And last, we have Longlai, a small local city with a population of about 20,000 people located between the Tian Shan and Ishkol Mountains at the easternmost tip of Calvert. Since long ago, it has served merchants as a gateway to the eastern part of the continent. But with the eastern part of the continent becoming more and more barren, traffic has been decreasing every year. While the townscape is eastern, it is not as flashy as the eastern streets of Langport and has a rustic atmosphere that invokes a sense of zen. It is also known as a training ground for those training in the three major eastern martial arts, the Moonflower, Kunlun, and Taito styles. That's all for the new news for this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. Some pretty cool stuff. Can't wait to see what they show for next time. Now, if you haven't already, please do consider giving the video a like and also maybe even subscribing to the channel as it would help me out a ton. And also, if you'd like to see more Kuro videos from me in the future as we progress and wait for the game. That being said, I am active on Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. And speaking of Discord, I am host in the middle of hosting a giveaway for one of the Sprig ed editions of your choice. And that giveaway should be ending about a day and a half from when I'm posting this video. So you still have a chance. So get on it, join the Discord, join the giveaway. Maybe you'll get it. And all the links for those will be down in the description. So check that out. Anyways. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. All the support for all the Kuro videos I've been posting lately have been amazing. Thank you guys so much once again. Definitely means a lot. That being said, I'll see you guys next time.